and what's up everybody welcome to the mango grove my name is krisha and in today's video we will be going over those oco orders that are long overdue that's right what is an oco order one cancels the other people usually use them as stop losses or rather stop losses and take profits in one order so we will be going over that today i will be setting up two trades okay one going long basically the whole buy low sell high and one going short sell high buy low although you know the former always comes so intuitively to human beings eh? but i uh, know we'll be setting up both trades that way i can show you how to set up an oco order on both sides okay if you're going long and if you're going short so if you're interested in that stay tuned And welcome back everybody. Now before we get into these OCO orders, I want to mention two very important things. Number one, the OCO orders, the way it is executed is the same on, well, the spot interface as well as the margin exchange interface. Now the difference between the two is, well, spot you're trading with your money, 100% your money, whereas, well, margin trading, you are trading with borrowed money. You borrow money from Binance to put on your respective trades. Now, the way these OCO orders are executed is pretty much the same. So, irrespective of which interface you're trading on, it's the same thing, okay? Um, and the second thing I wanted to mention was, well, I'm going to go ahead assuming that you are in a trade and you are trying to figure out what the hell is an OCO order. Okay, now if you're scrambling around and you just want to cut to the chase, I will include timestamps below. Okay, I will pin a comment with the timestamp, I will heart it, I will like it, I'll flag it, I'll pin it, whatever it takes, as well as I'll be putting timestamps in the description. Your time is important, if you are scrambling around, no need. Um, I'm going to take my time with this video. I want to make sure that everything is clear. I want to approach it with as much clarity as possible. That way, you know, it's broken down simply. So the first thing we're going to do is, well, I will be navigating onto the margin exchange. Now, um, once again, guys, OCO orders, the way it is executed is the same on the spot exchange as well as on the margin exchange. Okay, now, for, however, for the purpose of this demonstration, I will be putting on margin trades. All right. But it's the same thing. The way it's executed is the same. Um, now, we will be starting off with a long. I'll be setting an OC order for that. We'll be closing out that position. And then I will be putting on a short position, setting in an OC order for that, and then closing out the short position. Cool beans. Now, um, starting off with the long, I have not prepared for this um, trade. I don't know what's trending, what's not. Uh, what we're going to be doing is I'll be going on over to the Mango dashboard to tell me what is trending. Now I'm looking for long only trends. All markets, why not? Margin only. Cool. So Bitcoin is actually doing pretty damn well. Uh, Matic. Matic, Matic. Oh, I like Matic. Okay. Let's do Matic. Cool. All right, so let's look for Matic, Matic BDC. Cool, and what do we have here? Oh. Okay, guys, another thing about Binance's margin trading exchange. Now, while I'm going to be, you know, going through this video with you, um, I'm also going to be pointing out a couple of flaws that you guys need to be aware of. Now, the first thing is, well, when I hit Matic BDC, you know, that, that feedback is not there. So I didn't even know that the chart changed in front of me. So you got to make sure that you are on the right pair. You do not want to be setting, you, you do not want to be putting on a trade on a pair that you did not intend to put on a trade for. Now, to find out if you are on the right pair, just look at the top left-hand side corner and you will see the name of the pair. Um, I believe that's the only instance of the name on, well, this interface, which kind of blows right now. Um, so just look for that, okay? Make sure you are on the right pair. That is absolutely imperative. Um, okay, so Matic BDC, we are on the right chart. Cool, I will be setting in a market order. Um, and let's go super low risk. Now this is total balance. Okay, my account equity is 0 0.01 borrow, okay? Because I am gonna be trading on margin. And let's say, let's put on a trade for, 5,000. Cool. I think 5,000 is good. Okay, and let's say margin by Matic. 
Okay, now I get a order confirmation pop-up that says the order will use 0.01 BTC, which is my margin, in your margin account and will also borrow 0.00131300 blah 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 BTC on your behalf to buy, they forgot the word buy, 5,000 Matic. Okay, this loan will have interest. Cool, so I'm gonna say confirm. And I got filled on my trade. Beautiful, so now let's go ahead and set in that OCO order. But now the question is what side do we set our OCO orders on? Okay, so let's break this down. Now, what is an OCO order? One cancels the other. And like I said, it helps you set in a take profit and a stop loss. Now, if I am taking profit on my current trade, okay, I have bought Matic. Okay, I want to buy low, sell high. But that is the underlining action that I want to take. I want to sell. Okay, so when I am taking my profit, I am looking to sell my Matic. Okay, however, if I am, say, taking a loss on Matic, I also want to sell Matic. I don't want to hold on to this bag anymore if it is bleeding, right? So the underlining action that we need to take, irrespective of whether we are taking a profit or while stopping our losses, is a sell action, right? So if you are looking to set in an OCO order on a long position, you actually need to get onto the sell side. Okay, that is the side you want to set your OCO order on. All right, so we are on sell, OCO order, brilliant. Now, once again, guys, these modes are only visible to people trading on the margin exchange. Okay, if you are on the spot exchange, you are not going to see these three modes, which is completely fine. Um, everything else is status quo. Everything else should be the same. And once again, guys, it is executed the same way. Okay, you can follow the same instructions if you are trading on the spot exchange. Cool, now we are in a long position, however, the OCO orders goes on to the short side, okay? Because when you're taking profits, you're selling, and when you're stopping your losses, you are also selling. Cool, so OCO orders, now I'm actually going to hit repay, okay? I'm going to tell you why at the end. First, what we're going to do is we're going to break down these three fields. Now, the first field over here, okay, the price field, is going to be your take profit field, Okay, this is the price at which you want to take your profits at. Now, I personally got into this trade at 227 sats. So let's say I want to take my profit. Now, it is only logical that I take my profit at a higher number, a number higher than what I entered at. Now, I entered at 227. So let's say, let's take my profit at 231. Okay, yeah, 231. Beautiful. 231 feel like it's getting there, damn. Um, I don't want this to get executed as soon as I hit Solmatic. Okay, but that, the first field, guys, is your take profit. Okay, remember that, first field, take profit. Now, the second two fields is your stop loss, okay? That is your stop limit order, all right? Break this down now. First field is your take profit. The second two fields is your stop loss. Now, this stop loss, consists of a stop price and a limit price, okay, as you can see here. Now, I'm going to set my stop price to 225, okay, actually no, 226, and then I am going to set my limit price as 225, don't worry, we're going to be going over it. Now, of course, it's only logical that my stop loss is underneath, it's lower than the price I entered at, which is 227 right? Of course, there's not much of a trade here. This is only a demonstration. But let's break down the stop loss. Now, the stop price is basically the price at which you say enough is enough. I need to get out of my trade. I'm bleeding too much. Um, you know, I want out. Okay, that is also known as the trigger price. Now, as soon as the underlining asset, which in this case is Matic, okay, starts trading, okay, it comes down to 226, my price, my limit order of 225 gets placed on the book. That is the price at which my stop loss gets executed at. Okay, that is your limit order. That is your stop limit order. That's why it's called a stop limit order. The stop price is the price at which you say, I'm done. Okay, I'm done with this. And limit price is the price at which you actually execute your trade. Okay, it's the price at which you actually sell at. All right. 
Now that's how you read it, that's how I personally read it. Um, just, you know, try and break it down very simply. Now of course, this is two trades. Now remember guys, the first field is your take profit, okay? And the second two fields is your stop limit order. Beautiful? Cool, I hope you guys are with me. If you're not with me, just, you know, mention in the comments below, tell me exactly where you are getting confused and I will clear your doubts out. Um, okay, so I hope I'm doing a good job. I hope you guys are following so far. Now, like I said, this repay button right here, now because I am in a margin trade, okay, as soon as one of the two trades gets executed, whether it is a take profit or my stop loss, I wanna make sure that my borrowed funds, the funds I borrowed from Binance is paid back, as well as the interest I owe them. Okay, so that's why I hit repay. What that does for me is that as soon as the trade gets executed, those two sort of loans that I have, okay, my principal and the interest is cleared out for me automatically. Okay, that's what that means. And that's why if you are, personally, I am trading on margin, okay, so that's why I hit repay. I don't wanna have to deal with the hassle of getting back onto the exchange and paying back my loans manually, okay? I just want that to be cleared out for me as soon as my trade gets executed. All right, so that's what that means. Now all my numbers are in, beautiful, and I'm gonna say sell Matic. Okay, remember, I'm placing an OCO order, repay, all the numbers are in, sell Matic. Okay, it says the BDC you get will be used to repay the BDC debt in your margin account. Interest will be repaid first. Now they're giving me this order confirmation because of the repay mode that I selected. Okay, now this is staple on, well, even if you're trading on limit or market. And I'm gonna say confirm. Notice guys, they have not said anything about the OCO order, about what you are about to execute. Okay, I'm gonna say confirm. And now we're gonna go to the open orders list. And now you'll see two orders on here. One is a take profit, which is the first one right here. I put a take profit of 232, okay? And the second one is a stop loss. What an OCO order does, as soon as you execute the trade, it brings up two separate orders, okay? Things to note about an OCO order, you cannot have, well, two different amounts. You cannot execute a take profit for, say, in my instance, I can't execute a take profit for 4,995 and execute a stop loss for say 2,000. It has to be the same number, okay? That is a limitation on that. And now notice my take profit may hit actually if this goes up. Um, if it goes to 232, okay, say my take profit hits, I get my profit, okay? And my stop loss gets canceled. It just disappears from the list, okay? If you go onto your trade history, you'll notice, you'll see that a order has been canceled, at least that's how it shows up. Okay, it actually probably hit. Oh, beautiful. Okay, it says limit maker sell order filled. Okay, now if I go to my trade history, okay, now here we are. We'll see a sell order for 232. Okay, that was my take profit. Filled at 4995, beautiful. And um, let's see order history. Do we have a cancel trade? And there we go, we have an expired. So on your trade history, you'll notice that the stop loss, okay, the status of the stop loss was expired and that's how it works. Now you saw it for yourself. I had two open trades, one stop loss, one take profit, my take profit hit, okay? It got hit at 232, but as soon as it got hit, notice what happened to my stop loss? It got expired, okay? Um, and yeah, that's how you sort of put on your OCO order, but one thing I want you to note is that Binance does not give you any sort of confirmation on the OCO order itself. And so make sure you have the right numbers in, in there. Just click on the um, just click on the labels and you'll notice the dollar amount. Just match the dollar amount to what you have here. And that's, it'll give you a good gauge, to, you know, to figure out if you have the right number of zeros in there. Um, and um, yeah, I mean, this is how you place a OCO order on the long side of the market. Now, another thing I wanted to show you here is that because this was a margin trade and because I hit that repay button, we need to go back into well, our wallet to see if our funds have indeed been repaid. Okay, that is the principal that I borrowed from Binance, okay, the money that I borrowed from Binance, plus the interest that was accumulated on that borrowed money. 
Okay, so let's get into the wallet. Okay, so now we are back on, well, my margin wallet. And now we are here to make sure that the loan that I took from Binance, as well as the interest that was accumulating on that loan has been cleared out. Um, I did borrow BDC, if you kind of just rewind at the point where I take on the trade, um, it says that I, you know, they will use all the margin in my, in my account, which was not much. Plus, I will be borrowing some 0.00, .00 blah, blah, blah BDC from them. And that loan will have interest. Um, so now we're going to be just looking at that Bitcoin, um, which is pretty much the first thing right here, the first row. I just want to make sure that my borrowed amount is sitting at zero, which it is, as well as the interest, which it is. Okay, so those two fields have been cleared out. My entire loan has been cleared out because I hit that repay button because that is how I chose to execute my trade. And this is where it helps. Okay, there is no manual action needed from your end if you do execute your OCO orders in this manner. Um, and yeah, that's it for, well, setting up an OCO order for your long positions. Now the next one, we are gonna cover a OCO order for a short position. Stay tuned.